Hey guys, in this video I'll be animating a few little shots using the UAC rig in Maya and then exporting the FBX data to the Unreal Engine. I'll be putting together a race scene that you see here and this is using the free automotive bridge map and free automotive material pack found on the Unreal Marketplace. You probably know of these already but I'll put links in the description just in case. This beautiful McLaren P1 model, this was given to me by Brandeville Academy, really great model, thanks for that. And I'll put a link to the Brandeville Academy website in the description below as well. Let's set up the McLaren P1. Import the UAC rig. Snap the green arrow to the front wheel center. The red arrow to the rear wheel center. Select both controls and hit front view. Move the controls just outside the tire and adjust the tire width so the guide is also just outside the tire. Go to side view, set the tire side wall to just outside the rim. Now there's no interior on this model, so we can just hide the steering wheel control. And we're resized. So hide the top node and we can just eliminate the pieces as we connect them. We're rendering this one in Unreal, so we want a clean skeletal mesh we can export as an FBX. To do that, we're going to use the skin method. Select your tires, hit the tire button. Select your calipers if you have them, hit the caliper button. Select your wheel pieces, and hit the wheel button. And finally, select the rest of your bits and hit the body button. This car is now rigged and ready to go. So let's give it a quick test. It drives. We can steer. And the tires are working. So save this scene. This is your master rig file. We'll be importing copies of this shortly to create a few animations. Before we animate, we're going to export the skeletal mesh to Unreal. Again, make sure you've saved your scene. Select the root joint. Go to Select Hierarchy. Highlight all of the attributes. Right click and break connections. Unparent the root joint and also all of your geometry, including any chassis pieces you want to use. Just pull them right out. Now delete the rig. Select all your model pieces and the root joint and go to File, Export Selected. Set the drop down to FBX and export it. Let's move to Unreal and bring it in. This is the free automotive bridge map from the Unreal Marketplace. All I did was load it and nothing's been changed. I recommend creating a new directory in your content browser for you to import your skeletal mesh that you exported from Maya. So drag it on in, uncheck animation or it will bring in an empty animation file. Give it a moment. The imported materials will show up as well, along with the skeletal mesh and the skeleton file. Let's open the skeletal mesh. Looks a bit sad at the moment with these imported materials, so I'm going to assign the automotive exterior materials. There's a great selection here, and they have a material for everything. So let's start with the paint. Add the tires. The caliper paint. Glossy plastic. A nice light metal. Brake rotor face. And these three here are lights and they have a nice set of emissive materials here as well. 
brake lights. Let's take a peek. What a glow. Let's do the headlights. Let me toss the transparent material on the light cover first so we can see what's underneath. There we go. I'm going to use a honeycomb reflector for the blinker. Looks all right. And the secondary car paint, we're going to use charcoal. I think that's all of it. If you go to the character button and go to bones all hierarchy, you can turn on the skeleton. You can attach effects to any of these joints. If you export the light version, you would not have these double rings of joints on each wheel. These are the joints that allow your tires to deform. So let's turn that off and save it and we can close it. Once you have your materials linked up, you can delete these imported materials that came with your FBX. And that's it, your car's ready to go. So we can instance the car now into the map just by dragging it in. Let's take a quick look at it lit. And it looks like I missed one, of course I did. So let's open it back up again, the glass. And there it is. Let's drop on a tinted glass because we don't have an interior. I'll save it. So let's get out of here and go back to the map. And look at that. Wow, that is wicked. This is how the bridge map loads. It's already set up like this for you. Let's get this thing moving. I'm going to animate a little race scene. Five cars driving along this bridge. So I think it's a good idea that we take this bridge and bring it into Maya so we've got a good guide. So to do that, select your pieces and go to File, Export Selected. We're going to name it. Turn off collisions and we don't need vertex colors and export. Let's go back to Maya and bring it in. I'm going to start a new Maya scene and let's import the bridge. Just drag it in. This might take a little while. And there we go. Let's take a look at the road. It's in segments and it's triangulated, so this won't be easy to pull a curve from. But it is a flat road and a pretty simple shape. So we might be better off just doing a top view and drawing a curve. So let's put it all in a group. Now this is taking a while. I think there's probably a lot of pieces to this bridge. There it is. Let's pop to a top view and draw a nice clean curve. So go up to Create Curve Tools and pick the CV Curve Tool. I'll give yourself enough points here so you can move it around easily later. Looks good. Now we want to see this bridge, but we don't want to select it again. So open the Layer Editor and create a new layer. Set the layer to Reference. This will keep it visible and won't allow you to select it. So add the bridge to the layer and we can close this. With soft selection turned on, you can play with the curves pretty easily. And I like to move them around a little bit because a perfect curve is a boring curve. This first path here is gonna be our focus car and I want to have it drive by the camera and oversteer as it turns. So I need this bend in the curve path to be a little bit tighter. Something like that. I'm going to name this curve and I'm going to duplicate it five times because we want five cars in the shot. I'm going to straighten this curve out a bit. I don't want all of them following this tight curve that we just made. Let's give it a bit of variation. Move some points around. You know what, I should have duplicated them before I added that type bend. So I'm just going to delete the duplicates and use this one instead to make the copies from. So 
Let's smooth this one out a bit. Next one. Now it's just a matter of making each path a little different. They're all trying to win, so I would assume that they would be moving closer to the inside of this corner more than the outside. Now we can come back to these at any time and tweak it. This will give us a great starting point. I'm happy with this. So let's save the scene. And we can bring in the rig car that we set up earlier. Give it a second to load in. And it looks like I left an empty group in there when I saved it. I'm just going to delete that. Let's frame up the car. Now bring in the next one. Number three. Four. And number five. Now to really speed things up here, we're going to animate all cars at the same time. To do that, we're going to create some selection sets. The layers we have here are handy for this. So turn them all off except for skeletons and select all the root joints and go to create sets, quick select set, call it root joints or something like that. And now we can easily access all five root joints when we export later on. Let's turn those off and show the controls. Now grab all the root controls and go to create sets, quick select set and call it root controls. Now select the drive controls, same thing again, go to create sets, quick select sets. And let's call it drive controls. Body next and call it body controls. While this is selected, let's turn on dynamics for a moment. Now we can select all the dynamic controls and add that to our final selection set. And we'll call that dynamic controls. Let's go back and turn dynamics off. And on the root control, let's turn on proxy mode. Let's turn the mesh layer back on. And now we can link each car to its own path. These selection sets will make things so much easier when we animate. So let's load the UAC rig UI. And we have more than one rig in the scene, so we need to update the tool to let it know which car we're working on. And to do that, we just select the root control of the car you want to use and hit this long button along the top. And this will set it as the active rig. Now we can select our first curve and hit Add Curve Path. First one's done, and there it is at the start of the path. Now select your second route, set it as active, now select your second curve and add the path. Third car, set it as active and add the path. Fourth, same thing, set it active and again add the path. And finally, the last one, set it active, and let's add the path. Now we can close this. There they are all lined up. Let's hide them all except for the first car. Select all of the drive controls, and we can easily do that with our selection set. So we're going to right click on it and hit select members. And now we have all of our car drive controls selected. So anything we do, will affect all five cars at the same time. Key the path drive attribute at zero, and let's jump forward to 200 frames or so, and drive the car down the path. And let's key it again. So let's play this and see how we're doing for timing. Feels a bit slow, especially for a supercar, so let's pull the key in a bit. 
Let's play it. Better. Let's unhide the bridge and put together a decent camera angle. This one's a bit flat, but I think it's going to work for now. So let's unhide the cars. And open the graph editor. Offset these path drive keys so we can shift them about a bit and stagger the cars so they're not all on top of each other. We just want to shift them around and spread them out a bit. Alright, so let's take a look. Gonna shift this one a bit more. And let's set those curves to linear. Now the FOV needs to change here so we can get something a little closer. This scene is crying out for some tilt, so let's add that in. It's such a big change for something so simple. Get a little bit closer. And maybe a touch more tilt. Not bad. Let's leave it there for now. I'm going to duplicate this camera so we can keep that angle. And set this one back to how it was. And we can pop back and forth as we need to. I'm going to make this a little bit tighter this turn. So let's pull it out a little bit more. And I want to add some oversteer as well to this one. And I'm going to select this car's drive control, just this one this time. We don't want this to affect every car. And now I can add some oversteer. I think I'm going to focus on this one car as well. So let's hide the other ones. Let's key it before and after. And add in some oversteer. How's that? I think we need to pull it closer to the camera so we can see it better. And maybe tweak the path so the bend is not so far away. Now the oversteer happens a little bit later, so let's shift that over a bit. And I'm going to push it further, make it more dramatic. The bend needs to be a little bit tighter as well. And I think it needs to slow down a bit during the oversteer. A little curve tweak. And let's see it in our camera. Let's make it start a tad earlier. So let's give it another look. Nice and dramatic, I like it. Yeah, that's not too bad. Let's bring in the other cars. Almost there. Some of these cars are a little close to the main one, so let's move them back a bit. Pull this one tight against the inside of the road. Quick look at the camera. Let's 
This one's bugging me a bit, so I think I'm going to have him do some oversteer as well. Couple of quick keys. And let's have another look. Yeah, time for a play blast. Let's bring in all the cars and let's hide the controls and play blast. Here it is. And that one might be the one. So let's add some subtle dynamics. Select the body control selection set. Hit select set members. Turn on dynamics for all of them. Now we can select the dynamic selection set and hit select set members. Now we have all of the dynamic controls selected. And let's tighten the suspension a little bit by reducing the sensitivity. Let's also cut the influence down everywhere. And you know what? It's moving pretty fast, so we might need to reduce it a little bit more. Yeah, let's keep it subtle. And let's try that on one car, see how it looks. That looks fine. Let's check it on the oversteer car. Ooh, that's a bit heavy, so let's pull it back a bit, maybe 0.1. Yeah, that's better. Let's play blast it. Okay, that looks good except for the one at the back. That one looks a bit mental. So let's reduce the spring on that. There we go. Now I have a pretty neat camera tool I built for my dead fuse project and it's really working out well. So I'm going to use that right now to add a little uh, something extra here. I recently put this tool up on my site. It's just an aim camera with a set of neat attributes that you can use to quickly add some tilt, handheld motion and a camera shape. It's worth checking out. It's pretty cool. So let me uh, add in a few keys. Move the target around a bit. And I'm just going to add some noise to give it a little bit more of a handheld feel. Let's crank it up. Let's watch it on one car so we can get a better frame rate. Good. All right, let's turn on all the cars. Let's 
Let's switch the dynamics on and do a final play blast before we bring it into Unreal. Right, let's do it. Save the scene, and this might take a little while to save because you've got a bridge and five cars there. Now let's grab the root joints of all five cars and you can find them easily in the selection set we made earlier. Also grab the camera and let's bake the animation down. Go to edit, keys, bake simulation and make sure below is active. Hit apply. Ah, you know what? I should have took a play blast with the McLaren P1s active actually before baking. So while it's on my mind, I'll do that. So let's wait for this to finish. And now I can turn off proxy. And let's blast that with the McLaren P1s active. Okay, let's get this exported. So first, let's select all of the skeleton roots again and your camera, and we're gonna hit Shift P to unparent them all. Now you can delete everything else in the scene, and we do this because when you export this and bring it into Unreal, we don't want any extra pieces coming in. We just wanna bring in the animations and apply them to the skeletal mesh that we already set up in Unreal. So grab the camera, export selected. I'm gonna call it Bridge Cam and hit Export. Now the first root, Export selected, name it bridge race or uh, bridge car one, makes more sense. Hit export. Next one, export selected, bridge car two. Number three. Four. And our last car, number five. Import the new animations to Unreal. Drag them in. Select the skeleton that we added earlier if it isn't already selected and hit import all. Give it a moment. And let's bring in four more cars and put them on our bridge. Let's change the colors. Green, how about red for this one? Silver. And orange. This one can stay as is. Now under the animation tab, now let me just grab some more room here. Hopefully you can see this list pop up. You want to set your animation mode to use animation asset. And use this drop down to select your new animation one. Next one uses animation two. Third one uses animation three. Fourth car to animation four. And finally, number five. Now we want to set our transforms to zero, zero, zero for all of the cars. And this will put the cars in their correct position. So select all of them at once. And we want all zeros for location and rotation. Now, if we zoom out here for a minute, when we offset the curves in Maya, to stagger the cars when we were doing that animation, we caused the cars to pop to the end of the curve because the motion loops. Now I was a bit lazy and I could have avoided this if I set a few keys, 
but this is a good thing to show you. If I play the animation here, we're only gonna see the first car show up. Now Unreal optimizes distance, so because these cars are starting at the end of the curve, they won't show up in the camera, they're actually too far away, unless we have them in the view at the same time when we hit play. So if I look over here, where most of the cars are, and press play, and then quickly look back, now we see all of the cars playing as we would expect. A little bit of an odd thing, and I'm sure you can tweak that with a distance setting somewhere, but just to let you know that's there. So let's stop that and bring in our camera. To do that, we're gonna to go to Cinematics, we're gonna add a level sequencer and create a new one. I'm gonna call this one Demo. We're gonna double click the red box here and you'll see the sequencer window. Click the camera icon and now right click the new camera and hit Import and select your camera FBX file. I usually uncheck all of these and then just hit Import. If your camera comes in blurry, just go down to the focus settings here and change it from manual to tracking. Also pick the object that you want to track. I'm just going to pick one of the cars. Now because of that draw distance thing I mentioned, we need to keep all the cars in view when we hit render. Or the sequence will ignore the cars that are too far away. There's probably a draw distance setting or something like that somewhere. I haven't looked for it, but I'm sure it exists somewhere. And that will probably fix it as well. So I'm going to go ahead and render this out. And here's the scene. Here's another animation I did pretty quickly. I wanted the car to reverse out of a parking space and just drive away. So I'll use the curve path to reverse, and then I just translated the drive control off the path to drive away. And then brought this animation into the free Unreal Beach map, and here it is playing. Now cars in this beach map look amazing. This is a really nice map. So here it is lit, and you'll see what I mean. Here it is rendered. And here it is one more time. That is one beautiful car model and a beautiful map. Now before I sign off, version 2.3 is out now. It had three things changed. One, there was a curve point update issue when you re-add curves that were previously removed. That's now fixed. The second thing was dynamic motion would jolt abruptly on a very tightly spiraled curve or when the curves intersect at a tight proximity. So that's also fixed. And the third thing was a pretty fun request. Wait for it. There it is. You can now make your car fly. There's a new fly attribute on the drive control that adjusts all wheels at once. And also a fly attribute on each wheel for individual adjustments. These attributes play well with toe and the steering. Although you might want to set your wheel multipliers to zero if you want to stop the wheels spinning when the car moves around. There we go, that brings us to the end of the video. The UAC rig is a very powerful tool for animating your vehicles and I wanted to show you just how easy it is to get it into Unreal Engine's amazing automotive pipeline. Thanks for watching guys, subscribe, ring the bell, and give it a like if you want to see more. See you soon.